chemi putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking sharks gay. What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we are taking a look at another film review. Today we are taking a look at No Way Up, which is the number one movie in the UK this week on Amazon Prime. So I do recommend that you go check it out. It is a new movie on Amazon Prime, my personal favorite streaming service. And it's my favorite streaming service because you get music, books, real books, and also Kindle books, like digital books, all for a low price or free. You can also have a streaming service where you can see all the latest, really high quality TV shows and movies like The Boys, like Invisible, Invincible, like that new Fallout TV show, and a movie like this, which is No Way Up. You also get next day delivery on your orders, free delivery, and cheaper items which is so fucking cool, and all for the price of eight ninety nine a month. Honestly, a fucking bargain, if you ask me. But without any further delay, let's get back to the topic at hand and check out what Google has to say about this movie. So No Way Up comes out in 2024. It is a thriller action movie, which is an hour and 35 minute, you know, a decent length movie, an average length movie, none of this, like, two, three hour bullshit. And it does have a 4.6 out of 10 on IMDb and a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. So trapped underwater... When their plane crashes into the ocean, survivors must find their way to escape as sharks start to circle the wreckage. So, how this movie starts off is with the, like, a really posh girl going on a holiday with her two guy best friends. A little suspicious, so I do understand why her dad is quite worried. So he sends the hitman, the bodyguard for his daughter, and his daughter plays it off like the dad sent him. However, she's the one that actually wanted him to come because her mother died in a plane accident and she drowned. And holy fucking shit, guess what happens? Lightning doesn't strike twice, but apparently today it does. And if I had a nickel for every time this happened, I'd have two nickels. Strange that it happened twice, but still. Anyway, they get on the plane, they meet a little girl with her grandparents, and this like little teddy called Mr. Tiddlywings like, is important for whatever fucking reason. They get on the plane, the plane crashes, and funnily enough, these five people are the only survivors, because the granddad unfortunately died. The bodyguard then goes into the water to get an oxygen tank and gets killed by a shark and sets up the threat to the movie. Because when the plane crashed, sharks arrived, and for no apparent reason, the sharks were out for blood. They're normally out for blood, gotta be honest, but they don't like the taste of humans. So why they were eating the humans? Don't have a fucking clue. Gotta be honest, they, they devoured the humans and the dead bodies in the plane. Don't know why, they just did. The movie had no explanation for it. It, it. it was just how the sharks are portrayed in this movie. Not accurate to real life, but it, it's how accurate this movie is. The plane is slowly filling up with more and more water, and they are basically just stuck in the back of the cabin. There is one flight attendant and, like, the two guys. One of them has broken his arm, and they have to fix him up, so he's going to struggle to swim anyway. And they're trying to find a way out. They wait for divers to come. The divers arrive, they get eaten by sharks. Obviously, this is like the midpoint throughout the movie, which sets up the loss of hope for our characters. And it's a common trope within these sort of disaster type movies where the lack of hope is more and more apparent at the midpoint of the movie. And it makes the characters make the drastic decision to take like matters into their own hands and try and save themselves because they know no one else is coming to save them. We then have them get attacked by sharks again. The boyfriend to the rich girl ends up dying in a tragic shark attack after they all decide that they're going to ditch him anyway because he's that fucked up by the shark attack that he, there, was, there was no chance he was going to survive. So his body may rest at the bottom of the ocean. They have, uh, for whatever reason, there was divers on this ship, on this plane. So they have wetsuits which magically fit all the characters fucking perfectly. Then they get prepared to get the oxygen tank from the diver which died in the plane by a shark attack. For whatever reason, the shark didn't attack the oxygen tank, like you would expect when biting a guy. It didn't accidentally puncture the oxygen tank. So they get to it, and they only 
three make it, the flight attendant and obviously the little girl. They both go up together and reach the surface, whereas the rich girl gets attacked by sharks and she has to swim and survive. She doesn't make it to the top and passes out. She reaches the top, wakes up, and there is like a good eight helicopters flying around because her dad is the president and is looking for her tirelessly. They get rescued and find out, oh look, the guy, the air stewardess, and the little girl make it to the plane. She then throws her teddy in the water, saying that her granddad wanted the teddy to be with him when he was in trouble, and that's where the movie ends with our three survivors. The deaths are absolutely fucking brutal. You get to see the sharks shake their body around, the blood clouding around them, so you str you don't really get to see the shark. You just get to see their bodies flailing around. Uh, again, obviously they didn't want to ex spend too much money on the CGI here or spend too much money on the shark designs because there was quite a few sharks, but not a lot of vision of the sharks. We just had the actors flailing around in the water, uh, acting like they were being eaten. Obviously that's their fucking job. But there was no sign of sharks, and I do feel like, you know, the sharks wouldn't really come up and into the plane hunting for food. I feel like the plane crashing in would have scared them a little bit away, and if they did come back to investigate, they wouldn't have eaten the bodies. They they don't like the taste of human. They would have smelled the blood, tasted it, realized it's human, fucked off, and jobs are good and they, would, they wouldn't have had to worry about the shark attack. Again, none of them were bleeding except the guy with the broken arm, so none of them would have been attacked anyway by the sharks unless they felt threatened by them, or the sharks saw them as seals, which they don't normally do when they're in divers' uniforms. Like, that is a very rare occurrence. So this film is not accurate to the knowledge of sharks. Yes, I've watched a lot of National Geographic. I fucking love David Attenborough. He's an absolute broski. However, um, the rest of the movie's pretty shit. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Like, the acting is mediocre. Again, with these disaster movies, they don't get, like, top grade A actors. They don't get the likes of Ryan Reynolds. Th these movies are, like, a guilty pleasure for me. They're just, like, they're not brilliant, but they ain't, like, terrible they're like mediocre and they're okay it's like a good movie to turn your mind off to and this one isn't that good at building suspense or tension uh because i can predict every time someone's gonna get eaten or die because of the way they shoot the movie they have very specific camera angles and shots in this movie which show you hey look at this thing this is important and is a key detail that you should remember it always pans or quickly flashes up on screen like the jet engine of a plane, or will quickly change to like a shark swimming in the water, or sort of focus off the characters and onto a backing window of the plane and show a shark swimming past. It's key little e details like that which show you as the watcher that, hey, guess what? Bad things are happening, but the main characters don't know it, but you do. So it builds the tension, builds suspense, and builds the sort of oh, fuck, you know something bad's going to happen, but they don't. When's it going to happen? When's it going to strike? Is it going to come when it least expects it? No, it comes when you most expect it. There is some red herrings in there and some falsification of like, oh, you think something bad's going to happen, but it doesn't actually happen. But then it's that predictable that it's like, oh, we've, we, we made you feel safe with it not actually happening, so we're going to get you right now and make something happen. When it does that, it's quite boring and it's very predictable, and I feel like that one fell into the predictability of it all, with all the characters sort of being like, hey, we're all one sort of tone stereotypes with rich girl, boyfriend, sort of sarcastic friend, nana, granddaughter, flight attendant. Very, again, stereotypical roles, who are filled for whatever reason, the nano was like in Vietnam and was like good with uh, like medical supplies. I that came out the fucking blue. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I, I, I fucking hell that came out fucking nowhere. I'm gonna be honest. Like, holy shit. Uh, that that is not what I expected when she came on screen. But um, the little girl she reminded me of like Violet from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like the 2000 and like five one. I don't fucking know why. She did. Uh, she just did. It, it looked very similar to the 
actress and I was watching this movie and it was bugging me for ages because it was like, you look like someone, but I don't fucking know who. And I'm going to be honest, I watched this whole movie without going on my phone, but it isn't the most interesting, it isn't the most exciting shark movie, thriller movie. If you want a good shark movie, I recommend 47 Meters Down or The Shallows. They are some really good shark movies, and if you do want me to watch them again and review them, I will, because they are absolutely impeccable shark movies. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. I'll see you all in the next one. I hope you all have an excellent day, and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it.